On the very first day of my chemistry class, I performed this demonstration, combustion of acetylene. Now, the purpose for doing this is to ensure that my students will be good observers. And so what I'm stressing is that they use as many senses as possible. Now, the demonstration is going to involve creating some acetylene gas in this thick-walled flask, which is also called a filter flask. I'll be using chunks of calcium carbide. But since I will do this very rapidly, and it's rather small, I'm going to go to the diagram up here on the board so that you will understand how I'm going to present this. So this represents our thick-walled flask. What I'm going to do is put water into the bottom of the flask, I'm going to drop in some chunks of calcium carbide, and then I'm going to cork the flask and very quickly bring a match up to the sidearm. And then we'll observe what happens. So let's go back, and I want you to put on your safety glasses while we start measuring out our reactants. Now, you may use tap water for this, and the amount is not super critical. So just so that you have a couple of centimeters in the base of the flask. I'm going to put the flask behind the safety shield. Now, my calcium carbide chunks are these gray chunks. And I'm going to select three medium-sized chunks, drop them into the flask, and then bring the lit match. Because of the speed at which I do this, I want to have the matches already out, have my corks ready to go here. Now, always have two corks, because sometimes you can't find the first one in a timely fashion. But what do the students always say? Do it again. So this time, I'm going to leave what's already in there, and I'm going to add even more calcium carbide. And some of the students are a little bit anxious about this, because I'll be saying things like, well, do you think it's going to be bigger explosion? Think it's going to be louder? What's going to happen here? So I just take my time, drop in a bunch of chunks of calcium carbide, leisurely put the cork in there, and bring the match. No explosion. But what we do have is combustion. And uh, I want to quench this reaction, so I'm going to bring a wet paper towel up to the side here to put out the flame. And then eventually I'm going to have to discard this, but I do want to stop the reaction. So what I'm going to do is pour off most of the liquid into, a fl into this beaker. Now, by the way, let me mention something about calcium carbide. You saw how easily it reacts with the water in the flask. So it's really important that you don't touch it because you have moisture on your hands. Also that you seal it up tightly afterwards because, again, moisture in the air will react with the calcium carbide. Now we're going to go back up to our board and uh, talk about the reaction. Now, with my students, what I would do is ask them, okay, in terms of gases, is there any gas in this flask before I even add the water and the calcium carbide? And ideally, they would say, well, sure, there's air in the flask. OK, what gases are in air? And maybe you'd get that nitrogen and oxygen as the two main components in air. And then it's like, which one's in greater abundance? Does anyone know what that ratio is? And that's kind of a tough question on the first day of chemistry. But at least maybe some of them will know that there's a lot more nitrogen than oxygen. And so at this point, I can take my glasses off while I'm at the board here. And I'll say, all right. To represent oxygen, I'm going to use 
this model right here. And I tell them how oxygen hangs around in twos, so that's O2. And the purple is going to represent nitrogen. But since the ratio is approximately 4 to 1, let's put four oxygen, I'm sorry, four nitrogens in here and one oxygen. Now, there's of course air outside the flask, right? So let's put some nitrogen and oxygen hanging outside the flask here. Now, what happens when I add the, ca the calcium carbide in the water? I produce acetylene gas. And we're going to use this model to represent acetylene gas. Acetylene is C2H2. And with my students, I'd actually talk about those symbols. Now, we'll put a couple of acetylene molecules in here. And then I'll say when I bring that lit match up to the sidearm, the oxygen and the acetylene can react. That's what combustion is, reaction with oxygen. And it's going to produce even more gases. Those gases are going to expand rapidly. They're going to push out the cork. And then air rushes back in. And that's why we get an explosion. So what I'm doing is I'm explaining what an explosion is all about. It's a rapid expansion of gases followed by air rushing into that space. Now, why did we get a different result when I let the reaction go longer? Well, let's go back and put our cork back in the flask. And now, remember, I added a lot more calcium carbide, and I waited. And that waiting is what's really critical. Because when we wait, we produce more and more acetylene. But what's going to happen to the air that's in the flask? As we make more and more acetylene, those nitrogen and oxygen molecules are going to be pushed out of the flask. And so when I bring the match up the second time, all I've got is acetylene in the flask. There's no oxygen with which it to react. So what happens is we still get combustion, but it's happening right here as some of the acetylene gets to the sidearm and the oxygen's out in the air. Now, are we still producing gas products? Yes. But when those gas products rapidly expand, they're rapidly expanding into the room. And when they rapidly expand into the room, there is no way that we're going to push everything out of the room gas-wise and have air rush back in and get that explosion. So the difference is where is the combustion taking place? Now, this reaction is interesting to look at, but does it have any application? So let's look at a previous application here. This is a calcium carbide lamp. And this actually is one that was used by one of my colleagues who was a cave explorer and a spelunker. And it operates on the same premise. Because what you do here is that you put calcium carbide into the base of this lamp, and then you put water into the top. And there's a device here that regulates the flow of water. So the water drips in, produces the calcium, uh, produces the acetylene, and it comes out here. And then there is a, a, a flint so that you can actually light the acetylene. And interestingly enough, even though nowadays we would be using battery-operated lamps, this is lighter weight in the grand scheme of things. Now, these calcium carbide lamps have also been used by, in the very beginning, for headlights in cars, up until maybe even the 1930s. And I also read about, um, and I'm a bicyclist, and I also read about bicycle lamps being originally out of, out of a calcium carbide lamp. So that's a good application of this reaction. Now remember, this is the first day. So I'm not going to go through a lot of chemical reactions with them in terms of equations. But you can revisit this actual demonstration when you do get to chemical reactions. So I'm going to go over to the easel here, and I'm going to show you the equations that are involved. Now remember that there were two things happening here. We had first to prepare the acetylene, and that was by using calcium carbide, CaC2, reacting it with water, getting our acetylene, C2H2, and calcium hydroxide is, a, is an additional product here. So if you want to talk about acid-base chemistry sometime later in the year, you can also mention this equation. Now, the actual combustion of acetylene is shown here. 
and that's reacting the acetylene with oxygen to make carbon dioxide and water vapor. Now, this is a clean combustion, and I think we all noticed that this was not exactly a clean combustion. That is, we saw some black soot being produced as well, and that is carbon. And so you do get additional incomplete combustion going on. But with my students, when we would be doing balancing equations, I'd focus on the clean combustion, but you could also talk about combustion that isn't clean. And of course, with concerns in the environment, that's a major issue as well with burning anything that's made up of carbon and hydrogen. Now, I do want to uh, summarize here. Remember, first day of class. And even though we're not doing a lot of equations at all, though we're talking about formulas, it's a real good opportunity when that student walks in the door and says, well, are we going to blow something up today? And you can say, you know, as a matter of fact, we are. <laughs>